All right, today I wanna to talk about squares, how important it is to have a good one, and I'll tell you, in doing some research for this video, I am gonna blow your mind hole. Okay, so having a good square is probably the most, if not one of the most important tools in woodworking, as well as machining. Having a good square is probably one of the first tools you should ever buy, and you should never buy a cheap one. They're terrible. They're made out of really soft castings or aluminum, and the markings on them are stamped, which you don't want. Um, you really want a high-quality square. Some of the times, these squares can be really cost prohibitive. I mean, we're talking 75 to 150 bucks a piece, but I'll show you a little bit later in the video. I found a way to get blem squares, which are just cosmetically not sellable by these companies, Mitatoyo. Uh, Precision Engineering, Brown and Sharp, some of the best squares on the market. Uh, they send them off to this company because they have like a scratch in them or something or a little divot in the casting, but they're super accurate. Now, I've got lots of squares here. We've got some Starrets, which are always rated the best square, but also the most expensive. Uh, Precision Engineering, uh, which is always considered the best value. They're sort of a mid-priced high-end square, um, but they also make the squares for Mitatoyo, Lee Valley, Brown and Sharp. We have some T-squares. And then we have some square kits that come with like center finding gauges and compasses. And then I have a layout square. Now the first thing you should always look for in a good square is that the numbers are laser etched into them, which means you will feel a little divot when you run your fingernail across it. And that's gonna be really important. We're gonna talk about that later in sort of the uses for a square. We're getting into this, doing a little bit of a deep dive here first, but then I'm gonna knock out, we've got about 20 different 20 to 25 different uses for squares. We're gonna bang through those and get through this video. So we're gonna just crush your knowledge gap on squares. Let's bring it into the bench here. Let me show you what we have here. Okay, so here we have, this is the six inch start I keep in my vest. And this is a Mitatoyo Blem that I got. These are originally 123 bucks, I believe. And I got this, I think for $40. One of the things I love about this Mitatoyo one is how easy it is to read. Um, the start has a very shiny, surface, uh, whereas the ones made by PEC, they're the ones who make the ones for Mitatoyo, Lee Valley, Brown and Sharp, and of course themselves, PEC, have a really cool satin chrome finish, which is really great for reading, very easy to use. Um, and then over here we have our T-squares, uh, same kind of deal. These were all blems that I got, again, 60% off. What I like about T-squares is they are really accurate. So uh, PEC makes them to a, a 1.5 thou tolerance of squareness, whereas their 12 inch squares are four thou over 12 inches, which is very, very tight tolerances. Um, but that's the maximum allowance that they'll allow something to go out. Here I have my Veritas layout square. This is just what I use for laying out joinery. Great square. We're not really going to talk about these in this video, but I just want to let you know it's a square I love and is always in my vest. And then that, over here we have a couple different kits. Uh, now this is a Blem kit from PEC, Precision Engineering Company. Same exact thing as the Star. It comes with a compass a center finder, and then your standard combo square. I love all of these. These are all squares I love and use, and I have them sort of at different tools or in my vest and for different things. Now, let me go through. We're gonna start with measuring and marking. So we're gonna go for all the ways that I use this for like measuring in my joinery and that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna go through all the other uses for a square that's great for like machinery setup and different little tips and tricks I have. We're gonna bang through these with some B-roll and I think you're really gonna enjoy this. So stick with me here. Uh, again, all these will be linked down below in the pinned comment and the description. Okay, so we're gonna get into measuring and marking here, but first you wanna check and make sure that your square is accurate. This is a very simple thing to do. You want to put it against an edge that you know is flat, something that your combo square is great for checking. And you take your square, you put it against the edge, make sure that it's locked down, and you just draw a straight line. And then you flip the square over the other way along the same edge, and you draw a line right next to that one. And you want to make sure that those two are parallel to each other. And as you can see, this one perfectly is. And it's the same thing with your small squares. And again, these are the ones I was saying, these types of squares are great for joinery. Uh, I use these tons for dovetails and I'll show you how in a little bit, but same thing for these, just make a mark, flip it over just like that. And those both are perfectly parallel to each other. So we know that we have an accurate square. First thing I want to do is show you how to make an accurate mark at a specific distance. So let's say that I wanted to make a two inch mark, you're using a tape measure or your square to make a mark. I'll set this at two and a half inches here. Take that, 
and I'm just gonna make a little tick mark right on the edge of my board. There we go, we have our tick mark, and now let's say I wanna make a strike a line across a board. I just find that tick mark, and it's very easy to do by just sliding your marking knife, and you'll feel it click in there, and then you slide your combo square up to it, and then you just make a line. And sometimes I'll do one kind of light at first because grain can have a tendency to wander when you're going long grain. Cross the grain, it's much easier. And then I'll just make a little bit of a darker one. And you get a perfectly accurate mark at exactly that measurement we did. And you can look at it. And we'll take this and you can see, sliding my thing all the way across, it's perfect every single time. The next thing I love to use squares for, this works obviously with T-square or a combo square, is drawing a long straight line down a piece. Now, one of the great things about squares is that they really have thought of everything on these. Now, you see this line here, that's for locking your blade into the casting of your square, but it's also great for locking a pencil into the edge and accounting for the width of the lead. Because if you put it on the edge here, you're gonna be off by at least half the width of your lead. But if you lock it into your little gap here, it's very easy to draw a line without your pencil slipping off and it accounts for the thickness of the lead. So that's a great way to do that. You can do that for all sorts of things, dados. You need to draw a line for where you're gonna put your screws if you're putting together a cabinet. There's a hundred million different ways to use that. Now another great use for squares is a depth gauge, uh, especially for mortises or dados. You need to figure out, you've already cut your mortise. You need to figure out how long your tenon should be. You can simply take your square, stick it into your mortise, slide it down, make sure you're bottomed out, and then that is exactly the depth that you make your tenon. And this works, of course, for either squares. Just pop it in there, and then you can find an exact depth for a tenon. Now, another great thing about squares is all the tick marks are actually engraved into the metal, and actually you can hear it here. But what's awesome about that is when you need to get a measurement, now this part of your square is also gonna be square, so you can put that against a board, get it flush with the edge, and then let's say you needed a mortise to start right at three inches. You can use that tick mark to put the edge of your marking gauge in. You can feel it click in there, and then you can just use that mark, and you know that's gonna be exactly, exactly three inches. Perfect every single time. And you can use that for transferring measurements to different boards. Uh, what's also great about those tick marks is let's say you needed repeated measurements with dividers. I use these a lot with dovetails and I needed a one inch tail and I needed to make sure that that was one inch. I can click that in there, it's very clicked in. And then I can spread that out. You can feel it right when it clicks in. And I know that is exactly one inch. So we'll put that in there and Boom, measure that exactly one inch. That's the great thing about good squares is the tick marks in the ruler. Now here's a few just measuring things that a square can do that are absolutely incredible. One is when you're doing joinery, especially dovetails, uh, things that are hand cut, you need to make sure that there's nothing in the middle that's gonna keep that from sealing up. So you can put it and drag it across and make sure there's no humps in the middle. You just look in there, make sure that this doesn't come off the edge and that's great. Then of course, a square is great for checking squareness, just like that. And then something the combo square can do that the T-square can't is also check for 45. So as you can see, perfect 45, and that's really easy to do. And here's a fun little trick for finding center, especially if you're a turner, this is a big deal, but also if you just wanna get something in the very center, it's very simple. You just set your ruler to pretty close to center, and then you just draw four lines from each edge. And this is great because you just don't have to measure. And then you can look right here. This is your exact center right there. Another great use for a square is these blades are so well machined that they're extremely flat over a 12 inch area. So if you're looking to see if something is flat, you very simply can just take your blade, put it on top, look for any light gaps. This is of course, absolutely perfect. It's a great way to check small areas for flatness. Okay, so that's a lot of ways that I use squares for measuring. Now let's get into how I use it around the shop for tool setup and those kind of things. One cool little trick about squares is they all come with a little scribe. So if you can't find your marking knife or your Jimmy Duresta ice pick, there's a great little scribe built right into 
your thing, which is very simple to use. Okay, so here's five ways that I use my combo and T-squares at the table saw. Number one, to check that my blade is square, ensuring that the blade on my combo square is in between two teeth against the saw plate. I also can take the blade out of my combo square and use it to check 45. I can use it to check that my miter gauge is square. I can use it to check that my miter gauge is at 45. And I can very easily use it as a depth gauge, which is great because it's hard to tell where the apex of a saw blade is, and this really accounts for that. Squares are great for setting depth on your router table, especially if you're transferring like a mortise or a tenon and you're just cutting that. It's really great to set the depth using a square. These smaller six inch and four inch squares are great depending on the resaw height of your bandsaw for checking that your blade is square to the table. The jointer is where the 12 inch square really excels. Not only can it be used to check the squareness of the fence, but it can also be used to check that your outfeed table is coplanar with the very tops of your blades. Now another great thing about combo squares is you can get these 12 inch four piece kits. Now one thing to know when you're ordering squares is that they're labeled as 4R or 16R. 4R means there's four different measurement gradations, whereas on the 16 ones, those are more engineer ones. That has nothing to do with what I'm gonna tell you here about the four-piece kits, which the four pieces are uh, the main body casting, the blade, a compass protractor, and a center finder. Now, the way that compass and center finder work are great. So with the compass, you insert the ruler in there, and what's really cool about this is you can set it to any angle you want. And these measurements are very accurate here on this side. You've got your zero mark there. Let's say we wanted something at 140 or 40 degrees, or let's say 60 degrees. That's a very common measurement in a triangle. You set it right there. Those lines line up perfectly. Tighten your compass, and then you can just make your 60 degree mark, just like that. Now the center finder works the exact same way as the compass or the main body. You stick your ruler in and this works with round or square objects. You just do it, if it was round, you could just do it in two locations or for a square, you can see this piece is a rectangle, not a perfect square. So we can find the exact center of that. So there's 1,721,000 things you can do with a square. I highly recommend you go get a good one. If you want one on a budget that is a fantastic square, maybe it has like a little scratch in it or something, go down and check out those blend squares. Amazing, amazing prices for those. But a square well taken care of and treated right can last for generations. And it's one of the most commonly used tools in woodworking and I highly suggest you don't buy a cheap one. Um, you know those like eye gauging ones? No, I'm sorry, eye gauging, didn't mean that. Those empire ones and like those machinist squares you see for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks on Amazon, those are garbage. They don't guarantee squareness and just because it looks like a machinist square doesn't mean it is. Guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a stop block, a dovetail jigger, a t-shirt. Guys, stay safe in the shop. Thanks for watching, have a good day.